Bill Gates Glory. is the major owner of farmland in the US and he's a vegan and he pushes that vegan agenda a lot. It's never nice when a billionaire who owns half the land is telling you hate, monocrop, agriculture, like you should eat like just veggies. Like, oh, okay, man, what are you planting veggies? Oh, what? You know? <laughs> he's pushing the vegan agenda. <laughs> Do you think it's hard to absorb protein? It's less bioavailable. So for what I understand is your enzymes at the time of digestion, they have a harder time with absorbing the proteins in veggies rather than in meat because of the volume density that that takes in your stomach. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly how much the difference is, but I, I know you absorb more protein, protein especially. I don't know the rest of the nutrients necessarily. It's like pills, you know, like that's what supplement counts in pills because it's like mm -hmm. smaller, easier to absorb, digest. Not necessarily that's a big problem, but it imposes kind of a barrier where like you have to eat more when you're eating veggies mm -hmm. and, and legumes. And it's not that you cannot get the nutrients there. You can, mm -hmm. you just have to eat more. And it's, for some people that's harder. Like it's, it, again, it's a, I think it's a knowledge barrier a lot of times. It can be done, it can be done, definitely. Definitely. Before I became vegan, I was worried about yeah. protein, like most people, I think. Yeah. And so I did research about it, and, and it's so weird because one of these things in a plant-based diet is actually the easiest to find. Protein is actually like only a problem for people who don't eat enough. But it's actually really easy in a plant-based diet. If you don't eat like only junk food, that's like you're I mean. gonna be fine. I do think a lot, know? but that's the thing. A lot of things people go to a baggy vegan diet, and they just eat like a lot of pasta. Yeah. And that's and that's where the problem lies. <laughs> that's like, not going to serve you yeah, well. Yeah. And, and there's studies also that show like people in general, but vegans included, have 70% more protein than they need. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. It's not really that much of an issue. It's an issue for someone who's, for example, anorexic or doesn't eat enough, yeah. you know. Most people are deficient in fiber, actually 95%, you know. Yeah. And it's a big issue. <laughs> it actually leads to heart disease and all these things, like all these diseases. We have these concerns yeah. about protein because we've been raised thinking that this is hard to get, right? Yeah. But these things that actually are really, really dangerous, we don't really hear much about it because it's not like a little cucumber or a tomato industry is gonna push like lobby. I do think wherever there is an agenda, there is an opposing agenda. Yeah. And I think it's more common to hear about the meat industry because I think they have a much harder issue to deal with. I can see them why they're doing sketchy things and like yeah. pushing an agenda but it's not like there is not agenda oh, for yeah. the other side you know yeah. for people that sell veggies and fruits and I mean an industry is an industry it's well, for money yeah you and know? I hope this doesn't bite me back but uh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go on a limb here I'm gonna say Bill Gates no is the major owner of farmland in the US and he's a vegan and he pushes that vegan agenda a lot it's never nice when a billionaire who owns half the land is telling you hate monocrop agriculture like you should eat like just veggies like oh, okay man what are you planting veggies oh what you know? <laughs> he's pushing the vegan agenda <laughs> i mean he's not vegan <laughs> yeah bill gates is vegan he's vegan yeah or vegetarian yeah oh but, I, I wouldn't trust him anyway <laughs> that's what i mean again i'm not making this a case for like no no, oh, no i understand the, the big like, conspiracy yeah, yeah no what you mean is like where there's money you gotta be a little yeah where there, cause yeah where there's there, the where there's money is you gotta be suspicious and that's why i say people vote with their money so yeah. a lot of times that's where you are doing your best i think consuming junk food is also a disservice for the planet mm -hmm. a lot of times we're all addicted to chocolates and stuff mm -hmm. but if you start like seeing all the packaging that comes in those stuff mm -hmm. in like candy and things even if it's like a vegan Oreo, like mm -hmm. that's a lot of packaging. Yeah, I agree. And that's why I think like, for example, urban agriculture is a great uh, solution for that type of stuff, like reducing the amount of plastic we need to package all the food, to process all the food. If you're planting things in your home or your neighbor, or your com you have community gardens, mm -hmm. stuff like that could really be beneficiate everyone. Yeah. And I think a lot of the solutions are there a lot of times, just gathering together with like-minded people that we know, neighbors, communities and generating food sources that will provide food security and I get it it's efficient the market is efficient big industries are efficient but I think the detachment for where our food comes is half the problem and mm -hmm. if we know where the food is coming from we'll be doing a lot better yeah talking about that if most people had to watch I mean this footage before they they bought these products like eggs and yeah eggs. they'll have a harder time buying yeah a hundred percent yeah but I definitely know a lot of people that are constantly doing an effort to get access to these other type of meats, you know? Because that's definitely, that's industrial farming. Uh, and
and again that's not a every farmer there is mom and pops farmer they're still like raise their cattle their poultry their swine in a more humane way and i know we talk about it is there any humane way to kill an animal potentially no but i think it does change it's a different concept if you let an animal live a more normal life use more ethical ways of actually killing that animal where it's like not smashing it against the floor i guess and that's mm -hmm. pretty sad yeah uh, it makes a difference and at least for a lot of people you know a lot of people do have a a giant problem with that video you just mm -hmm. show me but not necessarily with other videos of like regular farmers doing their job you know and i think it, uh, that culture is changing you see people buying more like free range eggs which not necessarily mean they're free range because that's the other problem the category of free range and organic and all that is also skewed a little yeah bit. it was not that video actually yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of what makes it hard a lot of the time the detachment for our food sources is a lot of time the problem it's like even if we think we're buying something that may be a little bit better, a lot of times we don't, we're not sure. We don't know, really know. Even if it says grass-fed fed beef, it could just be grass-fed, uh, finished, and like have been raised in a grain operation mm -hmm. his whole life. It, it, Semantics yeah. in advertising is the whole thing, huh? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You think twice when you go to a piece of meat in the grocery, yeah. 100%. So you, you mentioned earlier that you believe you can have a healthy vegan diet, right? And you mentioned that you know that there's studies showing environmentally it's not sustainable, animal agriculture. So yeah. that means to me that we don't necessarily have to, if, if we can be healthy without eating these animals and their secretions. So if we don't have to, and it's better for the planet, and we'll be healthy, and of course the animals are not going to suffer in the process and be killed, why not do that the plant-based diet again because i do think there is a level of killing still when eating plants it might be a little bit of a justification but also it's a little bit of reality there where it's like for me personally i don't think the really big change is going to come from me just not eating meat the real change is going to come from me finding how i can eat food that i know where it came from and that's what i'm committed to personally mm -hmm just know where my food comes from and that's the whole point I'm studying what I'm studying and I'm mm -hmm. trying to have my own farm one day and like grow my own food because I really care about the subject and I do think I can not provide just myself with a solution but the people that's around me and I think if more people look at it that way maybe we'll have more substantial change sometimes we focus on doing things on such a big scale that we forget that the people we want to take care of are just around us and those are the people that we can impact the most with our decisions so i feel like if i put efforts in every time i go to a grocery just start beating myself out for whatever i'm buying i may not have the energy required to fix the actual problem i definitely have lower my consumer i'm an argentinian i live base meat mm -hmm. basic basically i'm <laughs> french i understand yeah, <laughs> for a long time i definitely have lower a lot of my consumption of meat i definitely have a harder time just consuming fast food and stuff like that if you had to kill the animal you were gonna eat yes. before eating would you do it yes i've been hunting yes 100 mm -hmm. it feels like a sacrifice it doesn't feel right or good necessarily it's like a sacrifice but it feels so much honest to go out i see what you hunt mean. the thing you're gonna the elk you're gonna eat he has the chance to escape it's like a whole engagement with the action of gathering your food. If you're eating like just a farm raised salmon, that salmon was like, oh no, there, you know. But if you go fishing for trout to a lake, you, you know that trout had a life. Especially if you grab a big one, you're like, oh, this guy had a life and I'm taking it, I'm sacrificing it for my nutrition. But at least you're connected to the action of the food you're eating. You like, you know. And same with the, the plants. If you have to kill a bag that it's in your garden, you know you're killing that bag. And you know you are killing that plant, in theory, you know? I guess tomato is a fruit, you're not killing anything. But that's the other thing. If we really want to go extreme veganism, we should be eating fruits and grains, probably, right. mainly. Would you say it feels the same to you when you take a veggie from your garden and when you hunt? No, it doesn't. But it does feed me a lot more the elk than the veggie from my garden. The elk last me the whole year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the veggies seem they only last me a week maybe. They require more land. 
doesn't feel better to kill the animal. If you get to sacrifice for now, I'm willing to do. Maybe tomorrow I won't. Maybe I'll find another way to feed myself that I'm less, yeah, I'm more enthusiastic maybe about it. And I'm looking forward for that. And that's something I'm, yeah, I, I will like, I will like for sure. Okay, about the land thing, what I meant when I was talking about like the 80 billion land animals, these animals need a lot of food, especially the cattle, right? They take way more crops than humans take, and we're only 8 billion people. How many crops does it take to feed like 8 billion people, and how many crops does it take to feed 80 billion? So much more for the 80 billion, right? If you cannot cut that out, you only have to feed 8 billion people. So in terms of, of land use, wouldn't you say you need less for 8 billion people? Than 80 billion? I, I that, I, I, again, I'm not sure because I don't know if it translates like that. Because meat is more dense, it's nutritionally dense. So I feel like in the, if they, if everybody will be eating vegetables, everybody will be to be eating more vegetables. There's a I don't rate. Eat that much. <laughs> there is a rate of consumption of vegetables that right now that doesn't necessarily correlates to the one that will be once those animals are removed and you're planting veggies. And again, when you plant veggies, you have to kill a lot of stuff. You have to kill a lot of insects mm -hmm. and stuff. When you have free-range grazing animals, usually there's a lot of life there. I, I have videos I can show you where like in my farm back home, you can see the soy spot, acres, the patch of soy is empty. There's not a sound. You see the grass where the cows are grazing and those cows are living free they have like mm -hmm. at least three hectares per cow in that farm you can see a lot of life you can hear the sound of life when you mm -hmm. look at the acres where the cars are living you do silence and you hear beep, beep, beep. it's not necessarily an animal versus plants problem it's like a disruption of nature we've been very good at disrupting it because it's it proved good for us we need shelter for nature <laughs> Like we are not that well adapted. And I think that's what life is about, finding balance. I think that's something the philosophers have been debating. What if we can find that middle ground where we are most comfortable in, you know? There's always gonna be adversity. There's always gonna be problems and things we can do better. You remember what you told me about hunting, right? That it's yeah. a sacrifice. If aliens came down and yeah. they were hunting you, and yes. other humans and your family members, etc. Sorry for the image. No, um, it's okay. And you, you kind of asked them, why are you doing this? And they told you, well, it's a sacrifice. You know, we don't really need to hunt yeah. you because we can eat like plants. But, you know, it's a sacrifice. Just sacrificing yeah. yourself for me. What, what would your response be to that? Yeah, I, I don't know. But like for me, honestly, uh, yeah, I don't see. Yeah, that's a good question. No, I don't like it will be sad. But also, at the end of the day, a little bit, that's, sadly, that's life. That's what I mean. Like, sadly, I could even, like, if I get too deep on it, I can think when I'm eating a plant that I'm eating something that was alive too. And, that, and that's a lot of times what gets me too. I have had these moments of connection where reality where I'm hugging a tree. I had mm -hmm. those moments. I'm hugging a tree. I still live in a house that is mainly made by wood. Okay, it's like a sacrifice. I have to be thankful that I have this wood. I don't have to think, it, I don't necessarily think it's good to cut a tree down and kill a tree that have millions of years. I know I'm not gonna live forever. I know my family's not gonna live forever. And the aliens came and ate my family in front of me. Yeah, definitely traumatic for life and sad. But at the, there will be definitely a part of me that will be like, oh, Okay, this is the universe. Matter just consumes matter. Matter transforms. Uh, what about herbivores, though? Sorry? What about herbivores? Wouldn't you say there's less suffering involved in killing only plants? Would you say I, they I, suffer I could as say, much I could as say animals? yes with my current knowledge, but that's the thing. I know I don't know a lot of things. And I know we're so much behind with plant science that we are with animal science. Not really conscious of how conscious they are I'm, i don't really have the knowledge can i tell you my take yeah. on it yes i totally agree with this i'm gonna feel bad when i see a, a tree cut down yeah like, i'm that kind of person because i i feel the same way. like i think yeah. it's obvious they're intelligent in their own ways and they are alive obviously but my kind of view on it is by ve being vegan there's less crops needed so there's less plant life that needs to yeah. be sacrificed let's say for yeah. me to live because i need to have some plant life 
killed for me, right? To survive. Yeah. To me, it's about reducing the, let's say, sacrifice. So like a cow through their whole life, they, they eat so much. You know, like yeah. tons and tons and tons. But again, but that's the, it depends. It depends how you're you feeling the cow. A little bit of it, you know. If, are most people that are going vegetarian, vegan, really eating the soy that is coming from? Uh, diverse ecosystem or are they eating like the soy that is coming from a monocrop environment when they like literally had to take down every single tree there mm -hmm. and every single insect to grow that soy and again I'm using soy and cattle because those are the things I have experience in and I can tell you there's a lot more trees where the cows are than where the soy is because when the soy is you don't need those trees get them off there do you know that most of the soy that in crops agriculture are for cattle that are there for like animals to be fed to like 95% yeah. of it. Well, but like, again, but the, it's a conversion process. So I don't, I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know. I don't know exactly. It's kind of a math problem in a sense because I don't know exactly how much well, land you need for something. Or for you know, other. basically, cows need. I don't even know how many tons, but like through their lives, they eat way more than a human would ever because they're huge, right? <laughs> they're yeah. absolutely huge. You have to feed them for years and years for them to, to grow so big. And then when you do kill them, it's only so many kilos, you know, or pounds yeah. of meat that you can eat out of them. And they talk about land use and how animal agriculture is, is not really sustainable. It's mainly because of this. The amount of calories and protein that they give us is just so little. The water usage as well is so much worse than for pen agriculture. Yeah. And so it's really like, it's it's mind-boggling. I'm yeah, sure you no. can, if you're interested, you can Google that. Last question, yeah, I started. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. It's a very interesting question. I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, of course. So uh, the last question is, if you could choose to live in a world where you either have to pay for humans to be killed, animals to be killed, or plants to be killed, which world would you want to live in? That's a good question. I mean, yeah, let's say plants. Let's say plants. Well, thank you yeah. so much yes. for this conversation. That's amazing.